Imagine you've got a time machine. Not the kind that takes you back centuries, but one that drops you into the early days of the internet. Back when the cloud was just above in the sky, and hackers wore glasses, not hoodies. Back then, there was a tool that let people sneak into computers, browse systems, and control things remotely. No fancy apps, no modern security, just a black screen and some mysterious commands. That tool was Telnet, and today, we're diving into it. So grab your keyboard, we're about to go retro. What is Telnet? Telnet stands for Telecommunication Network. It was developed in the 1960s, a time when networks and remote access were sci-fi ideas for most people. Telnet made it real, allowing one computer to connect to another over a network. Essentially, Telnets act like a remote control, letting you manage and control a remote device as if you were physically there, controlling it with ease. Telnet was that door to enter. How Telnet works? Now let's get a bit technical. Telnet works through something called a client server model. Here's how it goes down. The Telnet client on one device sends command to a Telnet server on another device over a network. It uses the TCP or IP protocol, particularly port 23 by default to send data back and forth. You type a command on your device, hit enter and it likes shooting a message to a remote computer and boom, it responds in real time. Why Talent was so popular? Talent was revolutionary because it allowed remote management. Imagine managing servers, accessing data, troubleshooting issues all without being in front of the machine. It was a game changer for administrators and developers back in the day. Think about it, no fancy GUI, no mouse, just text, and it worked. It was straightforward and powerful in its simplicity. But like all good things, Talent has its downside. The biggest issue, security. Talent transmits data in a plain text, imagine sharing sensitive data over a network, and anyone can listen in. You will read your password, scary right? Telnet was not built with inscription, so it's like sending a postcard where anyone along the way can read the message. Enter SSH security cell. SSH initially does what Telnet does but with security built in. It's like Telnet with bulletproof armor. It inscribes the data making it nearly impossible for hackers to see what you are doing. Today. SSH has mostly replaced Telnet, but believe it or not, Telnet is still around in specific cases. More on that in a bit. Why Telnet is still used today? So if Telnet is insecure, why does it still exist? Simple. Some older systems, legacy device or closed network environments still use Telnet for its simplicity and lightweight footprint. In closed network, where there is no internet access, Telnet speed and low resource requirement are appealing. It's like a classic car that still works perfectly as long as you know when and where to use it. Demonstration of a basic Telenet connection. All right, let's see Telenet in action. Open command prompt. Type Telenet hostname or IP and hit the enter to connect to a Telenet server. Login. Enter your username and password if prompt. Data here is not encrypted. Run commands. Once connected, type commands like is to navigate or manage file on the remote machine. Disconnect. Type exit to close the session and return to your local prompt. Final thoughts on Telenet. Telenet may be old, but it's a fascinating piece of internet history. It paved the way for remote management and common line interface tools we use today. It's like looking at the blueprint of how we connect online. While SSH is more secure, Telenet still has a place in niche area teaching us about where networking came from. So next time you hear someone talk about remote access or common line control, even though Telnet was the grand friend of it all. Who knows, maybe you will even find a use for it one day. Till then, stay curious.
Stay secure and keep exploring the depth of the egg. Thank you.